So you finally snapped after watching enough of my videos or reading into just how deep this global surveillance stuff goes for yourself, and you finally decided that you want to start daily driving Tales OS to become a digital nomad with no identity. Well, Tales is a pretty good tool to start doing that. However, there's a few changes that I recommend making to Tales OS as well as to your PC hardware and to your usage habits so that you can really maximize your security and your anonymity when you're browsing the dark web. And if you want to show off how much of a leet dark web hacker you are, you can purchase my new tie-dye tour tees only available on base.win. And I'm still doing the 10% store-wide discounts when you shop on base.win and you use Monero XMR for your purchase at checkout. The tour shirts are colorful, breathable, comfortable, and they're only going to increase your chances of getting raided by the feds by about 4%. So they're definitely worth getting. Buy one today. And now let's get on to the tutorial. One thing that sets Tails OS aside from Hunix and Cubes is that Tails is a self-contained portable system. You don't have to necessarily use it on the same laptop every day. You can really use it on any computer with Linux compatible hardware. However, you should be wary of using Tails on public computers that might have hardware-based key loggers installed in them because these can sniff your passwords and other sensitive data from Tails OS or really any operating system that you use on them. Now to defend against this, Tails actually ships with the GNOME screen keyboard so that you can enter in your passwords without typing, but you still should look out for security cameras, shoulder surfers, and even capture cards that might be connected to these public PCs that'll be able to record your screen. Now, let's talk about what you can do to beef up the security of your own hardware, because that's a bit more reliable. If you're thinking of getting a dedicated laptop for Tails, which is what I recommend, consider looking at the Cubes OS certified laptops on their site. The main thing that all these laptops and hardware have in common, besides the virtualization capabilities, which you don't even need for Tails OS, is that they all have open source boot firmware installed to them like Core Boot. So if you can Core Boot your laptop, that's a really good option if it has compatible hardware to do so and you're confident in being able to Core Boot your computer successfully so you can have an open source BIOS. Now let's talk about some hardware mods that can be done to any Tails OS setup. And this is actually the single most important mod that I'm gonna show you first that would have been able to keep the Silk Roads founder, Ross Ulbrich, out of prison. It would have kept Alpha Bay's co-founder and so many other hidden marketplace admins out of jail. And that is a dead man switch to lock down, shut down, or possibly even destroy your Tails OS system in the case of an emergency. Now, Tails OS actually comes with a really unique opportunity to create a dead man switch, a very low tech dead man switch, because the entire system just runs off of a USB drive. And if this USB drive were to get removed from a computer while it's powered on, the computer is going to shut down. Uh, it's going to encrypt itself, the USB drive will encrypt itself, and the screen is going to go dark, and your computer's RAM is also going to get wiped. So going back to the examples of dark web admins that were captured by federal agents collaborating from different countries, if they had a lanyard or some kind of tether physically connecting them, like you could wrap this around your wrist, and then it physically connects you to the USB stick, this would have come out when the feds tried to grab Ross Ulbricht's laptop or when Alexander Kazes, the former admin of Alpha Bay, ran out of his house with his laptop still logged in to investigate a car crash that the feds had orchestrated. He would have brought his USB stick with him. So some kind of emergency shutdown, ideally a very low tech one, like this is basically an old boot string, uh, wrapped around your wrist and then the USB stick. This is a necessity as an average dark web enjoyer. Uh, 
Uh, now let's talk about some other accessories to avoid, okay? So you want to avoid all wireless mice, wireless keyboards, headphones, and even wireless internet connections if you can get away with that. You want to go with wired connections because these are a whole lot harder to tap into. They're much harder to intercept. Uh, you want to take care to prevent people from tampering with your hardware, or at the very least, you want to paint the screws of your laptop so that you can tell if someone tried to open it because when they use a screwdriver, that's going to cause some of the paint to chip off of your screws. Now, this next mod is a little bit destructive, but it could be very effective at stopping shoulder surfing, and that is to remove the polarization filter from your laptop's LCD and then make polarized glasses for yourself. That way, anyone that's looking at your screen without polarized glasses, like if they're looking over your shoulder, they're just going to see a big white screen from any angle, and you're going to be able to see what's actually on the screen. Now, let's talk about some usage behaviors to practice with Tails OS, okay? So all of the typical OPSEC recommendations that you're going to find in the Dark Web OPSEC Bible and similar guides are still going to apply, obviously, but there are some limitations that are specific to Tails OS that we can mitigate. So a fairly subtle one that's in the vein of shoulder surfing is the fact that Tails does not clear your video RAM when you shut down or reboot your PC. This means that whatever's on the screen in Tails OS at the time of shutdown could briefly be present when you power that computer back on, even if you or the adversary are booting into another operating system besides Tails OS. So they don't have to capture your USB for this. That last screen from your Tails session can flash up really quickly, and it is usually scrambled, but there could still be some important private details that are leaked from that scrambled screen, things like a username when you're locked into a marketplace or a logo for a specific site. So I recommend before you lock or power off your Tails session to first minimize all of your open windows and also hide your taskbars, anything like that, so only your desktop is visible. And also make sure that you don't have extra application shortcuts on your desktop and keep the default Tails OS wallpaper. Don't change it to a picture of your favorite waifu so that there aren't any additional data points that can be used to track you on Tails OS. Now let's talk about some of the mods that you should make inside of the Tails OS system to become a full-time anonymous citizen of the dark web. For the most part, Tails is an all-inclusive system for dark web activity with the exception of a Monero wallet and a modern chat app. So if you're gonna daily drive Tails for dark web activity, you should enable persistence after installing it and then go ahead with installing a Monero wallet. I recommend running a full Monero node yourself for maximum privacy and because that also helps the Monero network. But if you can't store the entire Monero blockchain or you can't store a pruned blockchain, or a prune node, then consider using one of the remote .onion nodes that are listed on xmrguide.org. Now, as far as chatting on Tails OS goes, Tails does come with Pigeon for communication with XMPP clients. However, there's another FOSS XMPP program called Gajem that is compatible with a newer encryption protocol called OMEMO, O-M-E-M-O. That's better than Pigeon's OTR because OMEMO protocol offers many-to-many -many encrypted chats, offline message queuing, forward secrecy, and file transfers, as well as verifiability and deniability at the cost of a slightly larger message size overhead. So guides for installing these programs are going to be linked below in the video description, but it's pretty straightforward to install both of these apps. Um, Gajem and its OMEMO plugin can actually just be installed through the Synaptic Package Manager in Tails OS after you enable an administrator password. So very straightforward.
Now some other security considerations to keep in mind when using Tails or any other distro is to be on the lookout for post-quantum encryption algorithms becoming available as plugins for your crypto programs like GNU Privacy Guard. I've actually seen a number of GPG-like programs that are offering PQ algorithms as well as PQ WireGuard implementations, but these projects are still in their experimental phases. So be very careful with them. But something you could do today to actually enhance your quantum resistance with much more time-tested tech is to start using one-time pads wherever possible as a secondary authentication method. Now, let's talk about how to mitigate one of the glaring flaws of Tails OS that, in my opinion, really makes it much weaker than Cubes OS and Hunix, and that is the lack of built-in malware mitigations. Tails is basically just a hardened live Linux system that routes all of its traffic through Tor. Hacking Tails is not impossible, and don't get me wrong, hacking Hunix or Cubes isn't impossible either, since those are also hard in Linux, but to de-anonymize a Hunix or Cubes user and get their real IP, you would also have to escape a hypervisor, which is generally much more difficult to do than just getting root on a Linux box. So if malware is able to get installed or able to get executed on your Tails OS machine, there is a serious risk of you getting de-anonymized until you're able to reboot, which is then gonna remove that malware and anything else that wasn't able to get written to your uh, persistence partition. And de-anonymizing a Tails user has been done before. So there's this guy named Buster Hernandez who was a really bad guy. He was using Tails to stalk and harass underage girls on Facebook. He would blackmail them to get them to make these explicit photos and videos for him. Uh, he would threaten to hurt them and their family if they didn't do it. Really horrible stuff. But anyway, Facebook actually joined forces with the FBI to try and catch this guy because Facebook is the primary platform that he was hunting for victims on, although I think he used Twitter and a couple other things. Uh, and this was around 2017 when making fake Facebook profiles and like sock accounts on Facebook was a lot easier. So the way that he got caught was the FBI had one of his victims upload a file to Dropbox that contained malware. And this wasn't the old double file extension, you know, .mp4.exe trick. It was a regular video of the girl without any explicit images according to court documents that contained code embedded in the file that would give the FBI agent some kind of remote code execution on the machine that the file was played on. Now, in order for that to work, the FBI had to know what video player Buster was using. So here's how I think the whole hack against Buster went down. So Facebook knows that he's using Tails OS. They can figure this out through fingerprinting pretty easily. And Facebook goes and tells the FBI this. They start pen testing Tails, or maybe they already had known about a flaw in the Tails video player called Totem that could then give them RCE. So the FBI coordinates with the victim to get a video that Buster's interested in put into his Dropbox folder. The FBI adds their malware to that video file and then they upload it to Dropbox. And then that automated malware is gonna run on Buster's system and probably become root or become the ClearNet user in Tails. And then it can do a DNS request to an FBI server that they control, giving them Buster's real IP. And then once they have that real IP, they can really easily get the physical address from his ISP, do some surveillance for a little while, and then finally do a raid once they've confirmed that they've got their guy. So let's talk about what he could have done or others could have done to prevent this kind of de-anonymization entails. Using a different video player, for one, might have helped. I mean, I haven't even heard of the Totem video player until I started doing research for this video and I heard about the Buster Hernandez case. Apparently, it's the default player with GNOME, and so that's why it's included with Tails OS, because they just use GNOME apps. 
Personally, I would recommend a more popular open source video player like VLC or MPV because there's more people that are using these video players. They're both open source and so more people are looking at the source code and the odds of there being a critical bug that allows RCE in them is also probably a lot lower. Applications written in Rust might also be a good idea to use on an average dark web enjoyer system since they're going to have memory safety built into them, which is one of the main things that can prevent the majority of exploits that lead to RCE. And another option is to just disconnect Tails OS completely from the internet, unplug your ethernet cable, remember we're not using Wi-Fi, whenever opening untrusted files, which as we know, can also include media files, not just executables. So if the feds had rooted Buster's box or gotten to the ClearNet user, without an internet connection, they wouldn't have been able to get his real IP. And if he rebooted before reconnecting to the internet, then the malware would be gone. Another option to prevent de-anonymization through malware is to create a separate system either through virtualization or have a separate physical system to run files on and then have that other system act as your Tor gateway. And this is basically the same kind of system that Hunix uses and on Tails it is actually possible to install VirtualBox and run virtual machines inside of Tails including a Hunix a workstation machine, although I don't really recommend doing this since it requires enabling DKMS modules in Tails that can increase your attack surface. And also VirtualBox isn't a very performant or secure hypervisor compared to Zen or KVM in the first place. And if you've got a machine that's powerful enough to run VMs, you might as well just install Cubes OS instead, which is gonna give you much better security than Tails OS in my opinion. So now that leaves the physical device separation. This could be achieved by connecting your Tails device first to another computer instead of to your router, and then have that computer act as a gateway that routes all of your traffic through Tor, kind of like a Hunix gateway and Hunix workstation setup, but without virtualization. This also mitigates the problem of getting hacked because if Tails gets rooted, or if your adversary switches to the ClearNet user to try to ping some server somewhere, they won't be able to get your real IP without also compromising that other computer that acts as your Tor gateway. So that concludes this guide for enhancing your security in Tails OS. If you found it useful, please like and share this video with others so that they can also benefit from it. Comment below in order to hack the algorithm and Follow my channel on odyssey.com. Have a great rest of your day.